Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PBX 101 version 15, part 16, where we're going to be talking about the user control panel, also known as the UCP. The user control panel is a really powerful tool that you can give to your users. It allows you to do all sorts of functions related to the PBX, not just check voicemail, not just make phone calls, but all sorts of stuff as we're going to see in this video. But it takes a little bit to get it set up. Luckily, Sangoma has just implemented a new feature that allows you as the administrator to set up user control panel templates for your users. So we're going to look at all of that sort of stuff, but first, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you put a like on this video and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more videos just like this one. Also, if you're looking to buy me a beer or just donate some cryptocurrency to Crosstalk Solutions, there are links down below to do that as well. Here I am at the dashboard of free PBX, and the first thing we need to do is figure out how the heck do we get to the user control panel. Well, the easiest way to do it if you're logged in as an administrator, is just click this UCP button right here. And you can see that it has opened up a new tab that is my fully qualified domain name slash UCP. Okay, there's another way to get there though, and let's look at those options. So going back to the free PBX administration, if we go to admin and then system admin, and then we click on port management, Notice we have user control panel. The insecure port is port 81, which means you can open a browser tab and you can go to HTTP, so not HTTPS, HTTP colon slash slash fully qualified domain name or IP address colon 81. And once again, I'm presented with the user control panel, but we are not secure. So I would recommend disabling the insecure port 81 and then enabling port 4443 and then applying that change. Now, why would you possibly want to have the user control panel on a separate port rather than just going to the fully qualified domain name, uh, you know, slash UCP? The reason for this is because you might not want to expose the administrative GUI of free PBX to the outside world, like through your corporate firewall, for instance. But if you have UCP running on port 4443, you can then open just that port through, uh, through your firewall and not have to worry about people accessing the administrative GUI. So let's go back here. We're going to say HTTPS colon slash slash our fully qualified domain name. And then we're going to say port 4443. And once again, we are at the user control panel. This time though, uh, we do have a secure connection by virtue of our Let's Encrypt certificate. How do users log into the user base control panel? That is done with their, typically with their extension number and their user management password. Let's take a look at that next. We're gonna go to admin, user management. And then let's take a look at uh, Dwight Schrute here, for instance. So we're gonna edit that extension and we're going to give Dwight Schrute a nice secure password for the user base control panel. So we've got login name of 201. Typically the login name is equal to the extension number. It doesn't have to be, but typically it is. And by default it is. And then we've created a nice strong password for this user. So let's go ahead and submit, or you can say submit and send email to user, which sends the email that we talked about in the last video, as a notification to your users that, hey, here's your username and password for the user base control panel. Since we don't need to send the email in this case, I'm just going to click submit. And you want to make sure that you also apply config. Because that username and password is not set up until you hit that apply config button. All right, now let's go over to our user control panel. We're going to log in with 201 as well as the password that I just created. Boom, and there we go. We have logged into the user base control panel, but notice here it says you have no dashboards. Click here to add one. So this has been something that's been a problem with free PBX for a long time. There's been no way to have a default dashboard for your users that an administrator can set up. Now that has changed. That feature now exists. We're gonna look at that later in this video, 
But this is how typically users are given their user base control panel. And you know, historically we would have to log in as every user individually and set them up with some you know, minimal amount of dashboard so that it doesn't look just like a big blank screen like this. All right, so we need to first add a dashboard. So it says click here to add one, or certainly we can click the plus here in the upper right hand corner. So we'll say click the dashboard. We'll just call this default and create dashboard. Now notice there's a tab here, so you can have multiple dashboards. If you wanna have a different dashboard for say, viewing someone else's extension, we can add that. So if we say, you know, Michael Scott, create dashboard. Now we have two tabs. We have a default tab and a Michael Scott tab. So as Dwight Schrute, imagine that we have our default tab for all of this stuff for our own extension, our voicemail, all our call history, etc. But then we also have permissions to view stuff for Michael Scott. Maybe that's why we would want a second tab. This video is brought to you by the wonderful folks over at Crosstalk SIP. If you need SIP trunking services for your PBX, please consider Crosstalk SIP. We've designed our trunking to be competitively priced with excellent quality and full trunk redundancy for both inbound and outbound calls. We have two main packages for SIP trunking. Our five channel package is $69.99 per month and includes 4,000 minutes worth of calling. Our 10 channel package is $129.99 per month and includes 8,500 minutes worth of calling. All Crosstalk SIP trunking is 100% Carries Law and Ray Bomb Act E911 compliant. And if you mention this video when you contact us, we'll throw in remote setup of your SIP trunks on free PBX absolutely free. So in short, Crosstalk SIP trunking is competitively priced, fully redundant, has crystal clear call quality, is 100% compatible with free PBX, 100% carries law and Ray Bomb Act E911 compliant. We provide expert level support services for any issues that you may encounter. And as an added bonus, we will set up those trunks for you on your server. I mean, what more could you ask for? So check the link in the description below for more information on Crosstalk SIP trunking and we look forward to having you as a customer. All right, now back to the video. Now that we've got our dashboards, what can we do with these? Well, we need to start adding widgets. And the button here in the upper left allows us to add various widgets. So we've got two different types of widgets. We've got dashboard widgets and we've got sidebar widgets. So let's start with our main dashboard widgets. We're gonna add a few of these that we see in this list. So let's say call forwarding, we'll add that one. And now we have a call forwarding widget, right? So we've got different ways to do call forwarding. So for instance, if I wanted to forward all of my calls to a different phone number, say my cell phone or something like that, I can turn this on and then enter a number. 541-555-1212, right? Whatever number we want and save that. And now we have unconditionally forwarded all calls to this number. Now, if I disable it and then re-enable it, I'd have to put in a new forwarding number again, 541 555-1212, okay, save that. Every widget also has settings. So we see the gear icon here and the settings do different things for different widgets. So for instance, the settings for call forwarding is just our ringer timer, right? So if we click this, it says the number of seconds to ring prior to going to voicemail, blah, 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 right? So if we are call forwarding out to say our cell phone, maybe we only wanna call forward for 10 seconds and then you know, from there go back to voicemail. Okay, so let's go ahead and disable call forwarding. Let's add another widget. Let's try call history and add that. So here we can see some call history where Michael Scott called into our extension. Now, one thing that you're gonna notice here, if I go back to add that widget again, so it says call history and I can add a widget for Dwight Schrute, but what if I also wanna see call history for Michael Scott? Well, let's go ahead and set that up. So now we're gonna flip back over to the administrative control panel. And let's go into the user manager. Here we are in the user manager and we have Dwight Schrute. Let's go ahead and edit Dwight Schrute. We're gonna click on the UCP tab and then we're gonna click on call history because that's the widget that we want to make changes to. Now CDR access by default is gonna give us our own extension, but let's also add Michael Scott in here and click submit and then apply config. Okay, so now in the user control panel, if I go to add a new widget, well, guess what? It's not here yet. Okay, so we have to log out and then log back in. So I'm gonna close this, and then we're gonna click this button in the bottom left-hand corner to log out. 
And now let's log back in as Dwight Schrute 201. There we go. So now I have my dashboard. Let's add widget again. Call history, and now look at this. And now I have two different call histories that I can add. I have my own call history as well as Michael Scott. So let's add that one here. And now we can see multiple call histories. And look at that too. You can drag and drop these widgets around and arrange them any way that you like. Or I can close this out and then go over to my Michael Scott tab and add the Michael Scott call history over on this tab over here instead so that I keep things separate. Here's information for my own extension. This other tab is information about someone else's extension that I have permissions to view. All right, let's add another widget. Let's see what we have here. Call events, soft phone provisioning. We talked about when we did clearly anywhere. That is to add the QR code that you can scan for easy soft phone setup. We've got contacts. Let's go ahead and add that. So this is our PBX contacts. We can see all of this information now. First name, last name, phone number, etc. That sort of stuff will be populated when those users fill out that information for themselves or, or when that information is populated in their record in user management. So right now we only have Michael Scott's information because if we go back to the admin panel, we can see that Michael Scott is the only one who has a bunch of information listed. And then for anyone that has their information in the system already, you can click on that record and get all of their information. So here's the picture, right? We can see the phone number internally as extension 200, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We can see all of this stuff. All right, let's add another widget. Do not disturb. Let's add that one. Well, this one's real simple. This is to turn on do not disturb for your phone. Do not disturb on, do not disturb off. All right, let's add another widget. Device management, let's add that one. So device management allows us to change the buttons on our own phone. If we want to, for instance, put in some speed dial buttons for our phone, whatever we add in here is going to take precedent over what the administrator has set up in, in this case, the endpoint manager template since this is a Sangoma phone. We'll close that one out. That's not something that a lot of people do, but if you do have users that want to be able to add different buttons to their own phone, you can give them access to do that. All right, here's a good one, find me, follow me. So again, it's a little tiny button. We can turn on and off follow me. Now we're gonna do a separate video on follow me at some point in this series, but essentially it's the ability to have calls ring your extension and then forward out to your cell phone or some other phone number uh, if you don't pick up your main extension. So we can turn that on and off and we can set up all of the various find me, follow me settings, such as what are the phone numbers that we're dialing. Say we add one here, 541-555-1212, and we have to put a pound after that, since it's an external phone number, as you can see from uh, the description here. And then we're gonna say ring my extension for seven seconds, and then ring this follow me list for 20 seconds, right? And so those are the settings for find me, follow me. And then of course we can turn it on or turn it off. Let's add another one here. Let's add voicemail. So this is probably the most popular one that we have. Uh, let me get rid of contact so I have more space here. And quite simply, voicemail allows you to see all of your voicemails. You can play your voicemails right through your browser assuming that you have uh, a secure connection. All right, let's also add some sidebar widgets. So these are basically like some of the things like, see, notice these little tiny buttons here, like the do not disturb is a good example, right? Right now it's taking up some real estate on the main portion of the dashboard. But if I open this up and then I go to sidebar widgets and I add do not disturb as a sidebar widget instead, it's over here now. So see this right here? I can click it and it pulls out this tray that I can enable and disable do not disturb. And notice that it also affects the one that's on the main dashboard. So other sidebar widgets are call forwarding, call waiting, follow me, presence, phone, and Zulu. So let's try adding another one. Let's add a phone, add that. And if I click it, look at that. We've got a soft phone that is registered. So we can actually make phone calls directly through the browser in the user base control panel. Back in the free PBX administrative GUI, let's look at this right here. Free PBX UCP template creator. So there is a template creator user that we can use to make default templates for our users 
user control panel dashboards. So if we click on the UCP templates tab, by default, we have this one Crosstalk PBX template and it says template with voicemail and CDR widgets. And it was imported from what's known as a default template. Now, if I want, I can click this re-import from a user, the little edit button here. And I can say import from a user and I can select a user. So for instance, we just set up Dwight Schrute's dashboard. I can now take the dashboard that I set up for Dwight Schrute, import it, and that now becomes this template for user control panel or I can say create using template creator. So that basically does an empty template now and then you click on the I button uh, once you submit the page. So actually let's go back to our users real quick. Uh, let's click on UCP templates and add a new one. We're gonna call this test PBX demo template. And we'll also make that as the description as well. And we're gonna say create using temp template creator and submit. And now notice that it's highlighted yellow. So there, that means that we need to uh, click the I button over here to actually log in and create this template. So there we've logged in, we have a blank template. Let's go ahead and add a dashboard. We'll call this default, create dashboard. And let's add some widgets. So we're gonna say call history widget. We're gonna say voicemail widget. And we're gonna say, do not disturb uh, sidebar widget. And we're gonna add, follow me. And we're gonna add contacts. Okay, so I've got some default widgets. So let's move these around a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. And let's go ahead and click save right here template updated. Okay, so now we have our test PBX demo template. Well, how do we use this thing? Let's figure that out next. So it says right here, user control panel template association is done through groups, user control panel general, or users, user control panel general. And what is our rule typically, right? We want to work on groups, not individual users. So let's go to groups. Let's edit the all users groups. Click on UCP tab and then in general, we can say assign user control panel template. We'll say yes, which template do we want to assign? The test PBX demo template and submit that and apply config. Now let's go find a user that we have not logged into the user control panel with before. So for instance, Andy Bernard here, we're gonna edit Andy Bernard. We're gonna give Andy Bernard a strong password for the user control panel and then submit and apply that. And now let's log into the user control panel as Andy Bernard. Oh, I'm already logged in, let me log out. And then we're gonna log in as 204 and then the strong password I set up. And now when we log in, we can see that the template is set up exactly the way that we wanted it to be. So there you have it. There is a look at the user control panel as well as the new templating feature, which I'm very, very glad that Sangoma has implemented. We're gonna to get to know and love the user control panel. As we move through this series, we're gonna be adding additional widgets in here so that you guys can see the power and functionality of this relatively unused feature of free PBX, but really, really powerful for your users if you wanna give them access to it. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris from Crosstalk Solutions and we will see you in the next video.